welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samas in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana the very important uh, point about this mangala charana is that it is very appropriate to be recited at the beginning of the study of sanskrit grammar mainly because there are forms which are grammatically derived which are part of this particular verse this verse is the mangala charana also of a very celebrated and important text in the paninian grammatical tradition composed around 17th century called shabda kaustubha composed by the great Bhattoji Dikshit, who also composed Vyakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi. <clears throat> so the Mangala Charana is Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया इन दिस लेक्चर वी शैल डिस्कस द कंटेंट्स of this particular course we shall be discussing the concept of samarthya the samarthya is of two types vyapeksha and ekarthi bhav we shall be studying these concepts in the light of the three samasas that we will study in this particular course we shall be also studying what is an asamartha samasa in the same context the concept of gamaka as proposed by the great mahabhashya will be also studied samarthya is the base of the process of compounding semantic relatedness of two or more than two elements is the primary condition for the process of compounding to take place that is what is dealt with in vyapeksha and then when two such semantically interrelated elements come together and get merged together then they denote one meaning together as the meaning of one element that is the implication of 
ekarthi bhav however there are examples of exceptions where some words which are not semantically related are still compounded by the speakers of sanskrit we have already studied the examples of asamartha samasa in tatpurusha in the first course like devadattasya gurukulam and also asuryam pashya rajadara these are the two asamartha samasas where devadattasya is linked with guru and guru is linked with kulam now guru which is part of the samasa is being related to devadatta that is causing the asamartha samasa similarly in asuryam pashya asurya is compounded with pashya when a is semantically primarily related with pashya so asurya is considered to be an asamartha samasa these are all very important concepts we have studied them in the context of the tatpurusha samasa we shall study them once again in the context of avyayi bhava bahuvrihi and also the dvandva samasa the next important concept is that of vritti there are five types of vritti whose characteristic feature is pararthya vritti is a technical term used to denote processes which are mainly characterized by the feature of pararthya where para artha is indicated some other meaning additional meaning is indicated what this additional meaning is we shall study later on along with the concept of vritti because samasa is a process that falls under this vritti the related concept is that of a vigraha so what is a vigraha a vigraha is generally translated as dissolution of the compound vigraha is the dissolution of the compound we shall study this aspect and the meaning of the word graha in this particular word closely there are three features of the compounded output compound word or samasa they are and we shall be repeating these features again and again these features are aikapadya aikarthya and aikasvarya aikapadya means ekapadatta aikarthya means ekarthata and aikasvarya means ekasvarata aikapadya or ekapadata means the state of being one pad 
in contrast with the situation in the dissolved form where there are multiple padas. The samasa is one pada. Aikarthya or ekarthata means the state of having one meaning in contrast with the situation in the dissolved form where each pada has its own independent meaning to be linked with any other word independently. Now here, those constituents are such that their meanings get merged and a new meaning unit is formed. And it is this meaning unit which then gets semantically related with the other parts of the sentence. And the third most important feature is aikaswarya or ekaswarata, which means the state of having one swara or accent. As we have studied in the first course, each and every pada in Sanskrit, according to the Paninian grammar, has got one Udatta accent. Now when two meanings get merged and one meaning unit is formed, two words also get merged as a consequence and one word is formed and similarly then those two words having two independent accents, they also get merged and this one independent word unit gets one accent. This is what is Aikaswarya. So Aikapadya, Aikarthya and Aikaswarya, these are the features of the process of compounding. Now in some of the modern phenomena that we referred to in the previous lecture, they can be also explained using these features. Like some elements may have only Aikarthya but not Aikapadya. Some may have two features and some may have all the three features. So these features are extremely important and to be remembered all the time. And we shall study them further in detail. The next very important topic is that of Nitya Samasa. As we saw in the case of Tatpurusha, there are Samasas which are classified under Nitya Samasas like Upapada Tatpurusha. So, we shall study the concept of Nitya Samasa which becomes extremely valuable and extremely important in the case of the three Samasas that we shall study in this particular course Avyayi Bhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva as all these three Samasas they are considered to be Nitya Samasa Avyayi Bhava partly 
also nitya samasa now what does nitya samasa mean there are two other explanations abhigraha and aspapada vigraha we shall study these again in the light of these three types of samasas along with the nitya samasa we shall be also studying anitya samasas samasas which are not nitya samasas optional samasas part of the avyayi bhava samasa or anitya samasas we also studied in the first course the tatpurusha samasas which are examples of this anitya samasa the other important point that we shall study in this particular course is the following what is the meaning of the word avyayi bhava bahubrihi and dvandva this is a very important question in the word avyayi bhava there is quite a lot of insight regarding the formal features of the avyayi bhava compound there are three other terms पूर्व पदार्थ प्राधान्य अन्य पदार्थ प्राधान्य एंड उभय पदार्थ प्राधान्य इन केस ऑफ द अव्यय भाव समास पूर्व पदार्थ प्राधान्य अप्लाइज इन केस ऑफ बहुव्रीही समास अन्य पदार्थ प्राधान्य अप्लाइज एंड इन केस ऑफ द्वंद्व समास उभय पदार्थ प्राधान्य applies now these terms also allow us to study the concepts of purva pada uttara pada and also madhyama pada in case of the tatpurusha samasa we saw that the compounding process happens between two padas in case of avyayi bhava samasa also the compounding process happens between two padas primarily it can recur but primarily and once again the process will happen between two padas as far as these two types of samasas are concerned but in case of bahuvrihi and dvandva samasa there are multiple members which can get compounded simultaneously in accordance with the statement of panini so we'll have to have the terms purva pada uttara pada and madhyama pada clearly defined as far as tatpurusha and avyayi bhava is concerned purva pada meant the first part of the compound and uttara pada meant the second part of the compound but in case of bahuvrihi and vandva purva pada is the first part of the compound and uttara pada is the last part of the compound there may be madhyama padas also in these two types of compounds purva padartha pradhanya as far as avyayi bhava is concerned is a very general feature together with certain exceptions also noted by panini as we shall study them in the course of this particular course so as we have been saying 
These are the three types of samasas, avyayi bhava, bahuvrihi and dvandva. In this particular order, we shall study them. This particular order is followed by Panini. He states first avyayi bhava, then he states tatpurusha, then bahuvrihi and then dvandva. We have already studied the Tatpurusha Samasa in the first course and so we shall study these three types of Samasas in this particular order, in this particular course. We shall be revisiting certain theoretical details that we have already studied with regards to these three samasas. We have already noted down the examples of Avyayi Bhava and Bahuvrihi and Dvandva in the previous lecture. Prati Dinam is the example of Avyayi Bhava, Chitragu is the example of Bahuvrihi and Ramalakshmana is the example of the Dvandva Samasa. And earlier in this lecture, we also referred to certain questions that arise as to what happens to certain elements in the sentence. And it is very important to theoretically study this aspect with respect to these three samasas. The other features of other samasas will also be studied in this particular course, namely the samasanta suffix. Samasanta suffix is the suffix which is added at the end of the samasa. Then Purva Padadesha. There are substitutions of the Purva Pada in the context of certain Uttara Pada. Then there is a particular feature called Pumvad Bhava, where a particular word in the feminine goes back to its root form in a certain context. This is a very prominent feature of the Bahuvrihi Samasa and previously we studied this Pumad Bhava with respect to the Karmadharaya Tatpurusha Samasa. Also important is the feature of Linga or gender. What is the gender of Avyayi Bhava Samasa and Bahuvrihi Samasa as well as the Dvandva Samasa? Also, the Vachana, the number, that also plays a very important role as far as mainly the Dvandva Samasa. There are certain words which get compounded in a particular manner and have only singular number. This is an extremely important feature to be studied. The next important feature is the Samasa Swara, the accent of the Samasa. As far as Avyayi Bhava and Dvandva Samasas are concerned, the generic rule Samasasya applies, but as far as Bahuvrihi Samasa is concerned, there are specific rules stated by Panini. The general rule for Bahuvrihi Samasa is that the Purva Pada retains its own accent. 
There are also some exceptions as far as Avibhava and Dvandva Samasa. The concept of Upasarjana become extreme, becomes extremely important and we shall study this in the course of the study of these three Samasas. This concept of Upasarjana will also help us understand certain changes, certain modifications that happen in the Uttarapada. Thus, the word Go becomes Gu in Chitra Gu. Then we shall also study the Padakrama, the order of words in the Samasa. In Dvandva as well as in Bahubrihi, the order is stated by some few sutras in Paninian grammar and we shall study them. Also, the Tadantavidhi will be studied. So, what are the strategies to derive these other three samasas? This is an extremely important question and the questions that are implied are related to the overall structure of the samasa. So which elements are to be compounded first? Now in case of the Bahuvrihi and Dvandva samasa, there is possibility of more than two elements to be compounded simultaneously. But there is also a possibility where semantically related two elements get compounded first and then they get compounded to the other element. And the Paninian grammatical tradition has also noted the change in the form in this particular process. In this light, the concept of Garbha is extremely important. So we say ex Garbha Samasa or Samasa Garbha X, where X is any other type of Samasa. So there is Samasas within a Samasa and then there are Samasas within those Samasas. And this process can continue endlessly. So there are multiple samasas with a particular constituent structure. And there is no stopping theoretically as to which compound cannot be a part of or garbha of which compound. So, any Dvanpa compound can be a part of a Bahuvrihi compound and then that entire compound can become part of an Avibhava compound. This is theoretically possible. This makes the entire process of compounding very complex, very difficult, but that is the feature of the process of compounding in Sanskrit. There are some famous writers like Banabhatta who have leveraged this particular process and have gained critical acclaim for their developed style of using compounds in writing prose. So, this Garbha concept, Samasa within a Samasa, this is very important and this will help us understand the strategies to derive 
these other samasas. As far as the Avyabhava samasa is concerned, there is one type of Avyabhava samasa where a samasa is formed on the basis of just one pada, which is obviously an exception. So there, the structure of the samasa differs. So this we shall study in detail in this particular course with respect to these three types of samasas. Also, the strategy is to dissolve these other samasas. This is an extremely important point to be studied. This dissolution can be shown in the form of a cut given between the constituents and then between these two constituents there may be multiple cuts appearing which indicate the other constituents of these constituents which we dealt with in the previous slide namely the samasa garbha samasa, garbha samasa. This also comes to the topic of dependency within other samasas. So there are words indicating action used in these three samasas. And then there are karakas which also become part of these samasas. And these relations, they become extremely important. So the dependency relation of words also plays a crucial role as far as samasa is concerned. And the next important point is dependency of these three samasas within the same sentence. What role do these samasas play as an output within the same sentence? That also we shall study in detail. To elaborate this particular point, we can also say that derivation as well as dissolution of the compound as a part of the sentence and also the parts of speech of these three other samasas. One of the important features of the samasas is multiple interpretations which are possible of a given compound word. This happens primarily due to the internal structure of the components in terms of meaning as well as word forms within these three other samasas and also in between these other samasas. We have used the word other samasa in this particular lecture referring to the remaining three types of samasas, namely Avyaibhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva, obviously with the reference of the Tatpurusha samasa that we have already dealt with in the first course. The next important topic to be studied is cognition of these three types of samasas. How does one cognize that a particular compound is an Avyaibhava or a Bahuvrihi or a Dvandva? Also, how does one cognize the dissolution of Avyaibhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva? These are extremely important questions which we shall deal with. There are some scopes 
for newer thoughts to come in while we study these three types of samasas. For example, are there any gaps in the treatment of the samasa in general in the grammar of Panini? And we noted down some thoughts in answer to this question in the first course related to the Tatpurusha Samasa. In fact, the Paninian grammatical tradition has also noted down these gaps and has tried to provide answers. Can the same answers be extended to these three types of Samasas? In other words, how can these gaps be bridged with respect to these three types of samasas. There is a particular terminology that shall be used in this particular course. There is certain notation used in this course for a samasa. And also certain other notation used for showing the dissolution of the Samasa. The dissolution will be shown in the red color and the Samasa which is a resultant form will be shown in blue as is also clear in the first lecture of this particular course. We shall be using square brackets and also the plus sign. The plus sign will indicate the process in which two elements get merged together. These are the texts referred to. We shall be referring to Ashtadhyayi, the core of Paninian grammar, composed around 5th century BCE, the Vyakarana Mahabhashya, composed around the 2nd century BCE, Vakyapadiya, composed around 4th century CE, Kashika Vritti, composed around 7th century CE, and Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi composed around 17th century CE. Thank you very much.